Good morning, everybody. God bless you on this Thanksgiving Monday morning. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Praise God. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. And you will be joining us this morning for prayer and for the word. But I want you to enjoy this song. He's all I need. Truly, in these days, with everything that's going on, Jesus is all that we need. So, praise God. Enjoy this beautiful song. He's all I need. Patrick, good morning, Peggy. Jesus is all we need, especially in these last days. Good morning, Pastor. God bless you, sir. Yes, is that your prayer this morning? Is that your heart's desire? Is that Jesus is all you need? That's my prayer. Praise God. God bless you, everybody. You're coming on. Make that your prayer this morning. Jesus is all I need. Jesus, you're all we need. It's all we need is Jesus. At this point, with the coming of the Lord so soon. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll just wait another 20, 30 seconds, everybody, as we get ready to teach the Word of God this morning. Amen, Danny. He's all we need. Praise God. Hallelujah. Here we go, everybody. If you have your Bibles this morning, let's go to Psalms chapter 24. Praise God. Psalms chapter 24, if you have your Bible this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus is all we need. Amen. Happy Thanksgiving again, everybody. We're so uh, glad that you got up this morning to join me in prayer and join me in the Word as we start our work in the uh, our week in the presence of God. It's always important to start your week in prayer and in the Word and even daily in prayer and in the word praise god if you're just coming on psalms chapter 24 psalms chapter 24 we will be reading the entire chapter as i explain something to you very important especially in this moment of time with everything that's going on i'm getting ready as you know family this sunday you don't want to miss it i'm starting an end time series uh, that'll carry us uh, off with different services. Of, you know, at times there'll be some changes, but right till the end of November. And uh, I, I tell you what, it's we're living in the last days. We, we see what's happening in Israel, uh, and uh, we see what's happening with Russia and Ukraine and all of the governments. We're living in the last days. And I'm not going to teach you on that this morning and speak on that, and we're not going to pray about that. We're praying about Jesus is really all we need at this point. Praise God. And I want you to get that into your heart. He's the only one that will satisfy you. And he's the only one that will keep you in this time. Psalms 24, a very powerful scripture. And let's go there now. Psalms chapter 24 is uh, is really a, it's a psalm of David. And King David writes this psalm. Uh, and let me let me bring it in the context because when you read the Psalms, uh, and uh, even just any, a lot of the Old Testament, but especially the Psalms, you have to put it in the context of of uh, Israel's history. And why did David write 
uh, Psalms 24. And when we understand that, uh, the history of it, then we can really grab a hold of its true meaning and depth. Uh, the history of Psalms 24 is, if you remember, uh, the Ark of the Covenant of Israel, you know, where God dwelt between the cherub in the temp in the tabernacle of Moses. Uh, this is before the Temple of Solomon. Uh, David uh, goes to get the Ark because the Ark was stolen or taken from Israel, and it had been out of Israel for years. So you imagine the Jewish people had lost the the. Temp, uh, the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of God. And it was lost because they went out into battle and Hophanes and Phinehas, Eli's sons, the high priest, thought it was a good idea to take the Ark out. And it was never thinking that the Ark would ever be captured, but it was because of the evil and the wickedness and the ungodliness and the unrighteousness that Hophnius and Phineas were living in, as well as all of Israel. And Eli was not demanding the people to live right before God. The Bible says that when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen, that Eli fell back in his chair when he found out. He was a heavy set man. He fell back in his chair and he broke his neck and he died. Eli's daughter-in-law had a child right at that same moment. And the Bible says that she called her child Ichabod, which meant that the glory of the Lord had departed from Israel. And it was a very, tra it was a travesty. It was a very horrible time for Israel. And now King David comes on the scene. And he recognizes the importance of the presence of God. And the church has got to get back to recognizing the importance of the presence of God. And you and I have to recognize the significance and the importance of his presence in our lives. There's nothing more valuable than the presence of God in our lives. And David understood that. And David understood how it was important to uh, be bringing, to, to bring that Ark of the Covenant back into Israel. And he writes Psalms 24 in the context of the return of the Ark of of the covenant. Praise God. Oh, I'm praying today with you, dear family, that the presence of the Lord would return to the houses, to the house of God and to the church of God, and that the presence of the Lord would be so rich in our own personal lives, and that once again, we would long in such a real such a real way for God's presence. You know, the times of Hophni and Phinehas and Eli is happening in the church today. The Lord is getting ready to come, and there are those who have no longing for his presence. Boy, we need that. And that's what David writes about. And David writes about two things as we get ready to read it. He writes about the condition of the heart concerning the coming of God's presence to back to Israel. And then he writes about the physicality aspect of the Lord's, of the Lord's uh, ark coming back to Israel, which has also got great spiritual significance for us today. So let's go there. Let's read Psalms 24. Now we know the context. It says this, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in therein. Every, he is making a declaration that everything belongs to God. Verse 2, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it, it upon the floods. Meaning, he established the earth just at the beginning when the Bible says, let the dry land appear and, and, uh, and God set the dry land from the waters. He established it all. And what he was saying is that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, meaning that we all belong to God. We belong to God. He says in verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? But he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. 
he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from God, from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek the face, thy face, O Jacob. Praise God. And so here he's talking about the importance. Uh, he's going get, to get into it now about the ark returning to Israel. If you're just joining us now, we gave the, we're reading from Psalms 24, but we give the historical background of why David wrote Psalms 24. And it would be good, good for you to go back and listen to it. Uh, once this, uh, once we uh, head off air here, uh, he's talking about the importance of God's people who must recognize they belong to God, that they would seek the face of God and seek after the presence of the Lord in their life. And as the ark is getting ready to return to Israel, David is telling them that this is the people that can be in his presence. This must be the ways of the people who are in the presence of God, and they must have a great desire to seek after the presence of the Lord. So this week, I want to encourage you, spend time seeking God's face and desiring God's presence in a more tangible, real way in your life. It's the only way to get through it. It's the only way to walk in true victory. It's the only way to truly be an overcomer. It's the only way to be satisfied and to be fulfilled in your life is in the presence of God. I played the song at the beginning. Jesus is all we need. Truly, he is. He's all we need, family. It's more than, Jesus must be more than our own personal families, our own earthly relationships. Jesus must be more than the church, than our relationship with, with just church folk and with ministry. Jesus must be everything to us, and we must hunger and long as David hungered and longed for the Ark of the Covenant to come back to Israel. We must hunger and long for the presence of God to be in our lives on a regular basis. Hallelujah. David understood the importance of God's presence. We must understand it also. Let me read in the New Living Translation. The earth belongs to God. Everything in all the world in world is his. He is the one who pushed the oceans back to let the dry land appear. Who may climb the mountain of God? When you talk about the mountain of God, we're talking about the government and the presence of God. That's where God's presence is. Remember, he dwelt on Mount Sinai. That was his presence. Heaven is the Mount Zion, uh, that's where God's presence is. Uh, who sh may climb the mountain of the Lord and enter where he lives? Who may stand before the Lord? That's being in his presence. Only those with pure hands and hearts who do not practice dishonesty and lying. These are the people that can be in God's presence. They will receive God's own goodness and their blessings from him. Planted in their lives by God Himself, their Savior, there are the they. These are the ones who are allowed to stand before the Lord and worship the God of Jacob. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Lord kept speaking to me that uh, you know there are generations that become forward. They're, they 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 become uh, pulled back from the Lord and they worship the Lord with their mouths but not with their hearts. David is. David is reminding the children of Israel and he is preparing their hearts for God's presence to come through the gates, which I'm going to read in a second, into Jerusalem. And if we want God's presence in our lives, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to do a preparation of our hearts and, and put that hunger in us and that longing. So David is trying to get them to long for his presence again. It's been so many years away from Israel, and uh, he's he is bringing repentance to the land of Israel in preparation for the return. Now here comes the ark through the gates. The Bible says in Psalms 24, verse 7, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. 
Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Praise God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. You know, family, we want the presence of God, but this is, we can also understand the return of the Lord is so near. Praise God. As we prepare our hearts, as we long, not just for his presence, but also for his coming to, to, to receive the bride of Christ. We long for his coming. We look for his coming. We seek for his presence. And we prepare our hearts for his presence and for his return for the church of the living God. Praise God. And the Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Now you say, Pastor, what does that mean? Well, what David is saying is, Psalms 24, again, written in the context of David bringing the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel, he is talking about the preparation now of the city of Jerusalem for the return of the Ark of the Covenant. And what he is saying is that we must open the gates up, open the gates wide, because this is not just any ordinary king. This is the king of glory returning in to Jerusalem by the way of the Ark of the Covenant. What he's saying is lift up the gates and let the heads of the gates. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. There were two types of gates in Israel. There were gates that opened up like doors and there are gates that went up vertically. You've seen some of the, probably the movies where they pull on the ropes and the gates go straight up vertically. And those gates would go above the walls, and they would call them the heads of the gates. So as the gates went up, uh, the top part of the gate would protrude beyond and above the wall. This was a, it was quite a scene. And the doors of the gates would be something that was open. If they were opening it just for someone, they wouldn't open it very wide because, again, they were protecting the city uh, from strangers or from attack. So they would just open the gates a little bit and let somebody come in. Uh, if they were opening up the gates, uh, the, the vertical gates, the people would have to crouch down and go on them so they could close the gates. What David was saying is, this is not any ordinary person coming into our city. This is not any ordinary person. A natural king who's coming into our city. He's calling him the king of glory. Hallelujah. The Lord mighty in battle. The word glory there, family, is the word kabod, glorious. It really, it really makes, it makes an understanding of this is, an, this is the awesome, most powerful and mighty king of kings. This is God coming through our gates. Open those gates up high and let the gates worship the Lord. Let the heads of the gates worship the Lord. Open the city up. The king is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, actually, when you study ancient uh, historical Israel, it was about her hospitality also. When those gates were being opened up, uh, you know, when the, when the Queen of Sheba came to Jerusalem, they would have opened the gates up to her. Uh, maybe not like this, like David was commanding, but they would have opened the gates up to her to allow her in. Or for another king was coming in, they would open up the gates to allow them in. It was a sign of hospitality, an open gate. Actually, in, in Israel, if somebody was going to bring somebody into their house, they would open up the doors very wide. Uh, remember, they didn't have alarm systems. They didn't have what we have today to protect our homes. So they would have a board that went across the door. They would lift it up. It was a big effort to get that door open. And when they did open the door, they would open it wide for hospitality. Actually, it is said in some ancient, uh, ancient writings, uh, historical writings, that the Jewish people, if they were really wanting to be completely hospitable, they would take the doors off the hinge and allow their guests to come in as a sign of hospitality. David is saying, open those gates wide. Let us be hospitable. 
and let us worship with an open gate the return of the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of God. I'm going to bring you somewhere, and then we're going to pray for our week. Open it up real wide. Let the King of Glory come in. Let this awesome, glorious, most high, powerful God Almighty come in with all of his glory back to Israel. Praise God. We long for it. We prepare for it. We cleanse ourselves for his presence. Hallelujah. Because we want to be able to stand once again as a nation in the presence of the Lord. Oh, praise God. May we have that spirit again in the church. May we have that spirit as God's people. Praise God. May we stop with the foolishness and the antics and the complaining and everything else and the and the self-centeredness and the arrogance that's what david's dealing with here with his people and the because he said he says he talks about vanity vanity is is self-absorbedness it's 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 focused on me it's 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 about uh, it's about pride and arrogance and all of that and letting all that go and longing for the presence of god and being hospitable again for the return of God's presence within our churches. Open up our hearts. Open up our places. Open up our minds. Open up our spirit. Praise God. Open up our gatherings and our congregations once again to the presence of the almighty God, the King of glory. And let the King of glory come in. Not just us, but everything about us. That's what he's saying here. Not just us as a people, but the entire city. He, David said, I even want the gates to worship him as that ark passes through. Hallelujah. I want those doors opened up and off the hinges and being hospitable and welcoming with great desire the presence of God back into Israel. Hallelujah. We need it, family. You need it. I need it. Praise God. The church needs it. The nation needs it. The world needs the presence of God. And this is how he comes in. He doesn't go where he's not welcome. He doesn't go where he doesn't dwell in un- uncleansiness. He doesn't dwell in man's pride and man's arrogance. The Bible says the Lord resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. He doesn't like vanity. He doesn't like that. That's not where his presence dwells. He doesn't like to dwell amongst dishonest people and complaining people and self-absorbed people and profane people. We must allow the power of the cross, the, 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 the shed blood of Jesus, to cleanse us and purify us. We must allow the word to wash us. And we must have a longing, a longing, for the presence of God as David did for Israel. Praise God. Let everything that have breath praise him. And let everything about us, our whole lives, welcome him in. Praise God. Gates uh, re- represent our hearts. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. We're opening up our hearts with thanksgiving and praise, welcoming the King of glory and his presence into our lives. I want to encourage you to do that this week. I'm so thankful that you joined me this morning. You didn't have to on this Thanksgiving morning, but I'm glad you did. You made a choice to come around the table of God's word and receive this teaching into your life today. And I pray that you just don't hear it but that you make it applicable to your life throughout this week. I, this week, I'm going to be seeking in a greater way for God's presence in my life, hallelujah, and in our church. And uh, that's going to be my prayer. Make that your prayer also. And make preparation, daily preparation, as you welcome the King of glory through the gate of your heart into your soul and into your spirit. Amen. Praise God. And And boy, we need it, don't we? Israel needs it right now. We pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for the nation of Israel that this is their time of salvation. 
this is their time uh, of coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we're praying for churches that performance will not outweigh his presence. Hallelujah. And that, once again, the church will recognize the significance of the tangible manifestation of the kabod, the glory of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And I'm praying for you, dear family. And those who are watching live right now, I'm praying for you. I love you all. And I'm praying for, uh, for those who will watch this recording and be blessed by the word of God this morning. Family, let's go to prayer. And then you go enjoy your thanksgiving in the presence of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this beautiful portion of Scripture by King David. Lord, a man that you said was after your own heart. We pray we would be followers of that example and that we would be people after the heart of God. And like David, recognize that nothing was more valuable to him than your presence. As we see it in Psalms 51, after his fall, he says, Lord, take not your spirit from me. He longed for your presence. May we learn from King David as an example that you put him in the Bible. And that may we, Father, learn how important the presence of the Holy Spirit and the presence of our God is in our lives. Pray all that are watching will we'll recognize with great, with a great appetite and a great hunger for the presence of the Lord. As David said, Lord, that our hearts would be prepared daily before you without vanity, without arrogance, without pride, without being self-absorbed and selfish. That, Lord, that we, God, would prepare our hearts with humility, with a longing for righteousness and purity and honesty and integrity and preparing our lives for the daily presence and the touch of the kabod and the glory of our God, which is you. I pray, Father, that we will long and seek for the presence of God again, as David did for the ark to return to Israel, and that we would open up our hearts real wide to you, Lord, real wide, hallelujah, and that everything about us, everything about us, Lord, would worship you. Both the, both the natural and the spiritual, every aspect of our existence would worship and call for the coming of the Lord in our lives. And Lord, may we recognize this morning as a people that you're coming soon. You're coming as a bridegroom. You're coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're coming in the clouds with the trumpet of God with the shout of the archangel for your glorious church, may we make preparation, as David did for the ark, may we make preparation as the wise for the return of our Savior. Hallelujah. Father, touch everyone with your presence today, I pray. Fill every home with your glory, and may everybody sense your presence throughout this week. Amen. May they sense that beautiful presence of God but the Bible teaches us in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And may your presence, as David promised, may it bring blessing, blessing into our lives. He shall, I declare, we shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of our salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning in this morning, Monday morning Bible study. Please share this. Get this out, fam. I think it's, a, it's good from the Holy Spirit. It's his word. Amen. To be a blessing to others. And I'll be praying for you throughout the week. Please pray for me. I'll be praying for you and your family. Thank you for praying for me and my family. And may the Lord richly bless you with his presence. And may the King of glory dwell within your heart, within your home and within your life this week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. The Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. God bless you.